Hey there, plant people. Welcome back to my green oasis. I'm thrilled to have you join me today for an exciting update on all things Syngonium. In my previous video, I showcased some amazing Syngonium plants, and now it's time to see how they've flourished or not since then. But that's not all. I've also added some new members to my growing Syngonium family. You'll get an exclusive sneak peek into their captivating journey and how they've transformed under my care. And just when you thought it couldn't get any more mesmerizing, wait until you see my Syngonium Moss Wall. It's an absolute botanical masterpiece that adds a touch of magic to my space. We'll kick off this review with my fabulous Syngonium Ormnac. That is my Syngonium Ormnac. So this is what this plant looked like when I got it. It was pretty, pretty small, but look at her now. She is just beautiful. Look at that plant. I'd never get tired of looking at this plant. And I actually don't understand why I haven't put it on a moss pole yet, because as you can see, with this one over here, it's actually stalking. So you can see where you've got the area roots there and you've got the area roots there. It is a dying to be up on a moss pole. This plant actually would have been bigger, but because when I got it, it was really, really small. I've been doing a lot of propagating to get it to look nice and bushy. But one of the fantastic things I love about this plant is, of course, it's living in Lekka like the others, but the surprise thing about this plant is, look at that. Look at that root system. It is just absolutely amazing. All these roots are living in the reservoir and they are happy. It's so surprising how happy these roots are. And as you can see, I'm tugging at them and nothing is sloughing off. It is just absolutely brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Um, I might have to repot it now only because I think I do need to put it up on a moss pole. And when I do, then we probably won't have these roots um, living in that reservoir anymore. But she's just absolutely fantastic. I've showed you guys this plant a few times in the past. And every time I do, I have a couple of people say to me, that is not an Ormnac, it's something else. I don't know, I went back to the person who sold it to me and I said to her, look, people are saying this is not an Ormnac, what did you sell me? And she's like, nah, it is. I went back to the grower and it is. So I don't know, I'm calling it an Ormnac and I'm getting on with my life. A year ago, this plant looked like this. It was pretty small and it was still living in a 10 centimeter pot in Lekka. Look at her now. She is now living in a 14 centimeter pot and certainly sized up living on a moss pole. To be honest, I'm actually not quite sure why they call this Syngonium a red heart. It does have a few tinges of red. In my mind, probably more pink than red. And this plant is not doing the best, to be honest. It's still got those little curly leaves that haven't yet opened up completely. And I'm guessing it's probably because the humidity in my grow room is not like it should be. It's probably not getting as much light as it should. The growing conditions in my home have changed a lot since I've moved, but you know, it's still growing. It's starting to stalk there and it's attaching to the moss pole. So I can't really complain. That's my Syngonium Red Heart. Next up is my Syngonium Red Spot. Again, this is another plant that was really, really small a few months ago, but has now evolved and is living in a 14 centimeter pot also potted up on a moss pole and I'm really loving how that plant is now starting to get the proper trilobed shape of a syngonium or an arrowhead plant but look at that variegation on there it looks really really lovely you've got that sort of deep mm, red going there if you can call that red but overall I'm really liking how this plant is going I have propagated it a few times to put in my moss wall so it's probably not as big as it could have been because I've been cutting it but I'm really liking how it's going now and I probably leave it and not do anything with it at the moment that is my syngonium red spot 
Next up is my Syngillium Pink Splash. Oh, I have been through such a journey with this plant. It was really small when I got it. I think it was pretty much one leaf, as you can see over here. It was pretty, pretty small. It's grown and it's really, really taken off. It's now living in a 14 centimeter pot and that is her over there. I love that variegation that is on there. You've got really that those pink splashes starting to come out through those leaves. I'm loving how this plant is going. I think it's going to be a gem. It's attaching to the moss pole now, as you can see, the roots are, the area roots are really in there, doing really, really well. You can see one of the area roots going through the back of the moss pole there. That's it in its reservoir. And it's probably going to need a pole extension pretty soon. But that is my Syngonium, a pink splash, pink splash, pink splash. I'll show you a new one that, that you probably haven't seen. This one over here, this is my Syngonium strawberry ice. I've had a few issues with this plant since I got it, actually. It was a very small plant when I got it. I think it probably had two leaves. It's given me a few additional leaves since then, but I think it got a case of spider mites at some point, so I was treating it for spider mites. I just decided I was gonna start again. So I took off all the leaves that had been affected by the spider mites, treated all that properly and just put it back in this pond and I'm hoping that things are going to get a lot better with this plant. This is a strawberry ice and it's supposed to be really, really lovely when those red leaves have that variegation coming through. But um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I might just have to get myself a nice new big one um, because this one is letting me down a little bit, but I'll keep trying. I'll keep you posted, see how we go. That is my little, Syngonium strawberry ice. Next up is my Syngonium Maria. That is my Maria there. And that's back when I first got her. She was pretty small again. I do like to start off with pretty small plants because it's easier to get them used to living in the lecker. And it's just nice to see how you can actually transform a plant from being very small to being really large in your personal care. But this is what my Maria now looks like. She's, you know, coming along and, you know, I don't know. I mean, I, and I have said this in the past, I don't particularly love this plant. It came as part of a pack of plants that I got and I don't know why I've kept it so long. But it's here, it's surviving and it's hanging on and it's, you know, saying to me, I will be a part of your collection whether you want me to be or not. So. That is my Syngonium Maria. Um, let me know what you think. Do you like her? Should I keep her? Should I donate her? Should I bid throw her away? I'd love to know your thoughts. Ooh, next up is a new plant that I've acquired. This is a Syngonium Grey Ghost. And this is what this plant looked like when I got it. It was very, very small. And of course, I mean, sometimes I buy the small plants, not because I don't really want to buy the big ones, but because the big ones are rather pricey or it's the only one I can find. Some of these are pretty rare here in Australia and the gray ghost is one of those. So I got myself a gray ghost and that is what she now looks like. I just love the gray nature of the leaves in this plant. It just looks absolutely beautiful. This particular leaf here, no, hang on, not that one, this one. This one reminds me of a Three Kings, actually. I was a bit, hmm, is that a gray ghost? I don't know, what do you think? Does this look like a Three Kings to you? But yeah, it's supposed to be, if you look at this one over here, that looks way more gray ghosty than those bigger leaves. But I've got this one living in pond because I wanna see what that one's gonna do living in pond. The rest are living in lecker, but this one's living in pond. So we'll see what my gray ghost does. That is my Syngonium gray ghost. I cannot wait for this plant to get bigger because I think she is going to be stunning. Oh, this is one of my absolute favorite 
This is my Syngonium Panda. And when I got my Syngonium Panda, she was that small. It was such a small plant. It's gone through multiple propagations and she is just, oh, I love the starry nature of those leaves. Let me show you what she looks like now. This is my gorgeous baby. I absolutely love this plant. This is my panda. Look at that. It just looks like a lovely constellation, you know? You've got the dark green and the little speckle of light green on those leaves. It looks absolutely fantastic. I love how it's completely taken over that moss pole and it's just really, really shining. I'm telling you, I really do think that the best way of getting a syngonium to shine is to just give it something to climb because that's what they do in nature. Not all of them, but quite a number of them love to climb. So look at this baby. She's just absolutely magnificent. All righty, let's go to another lovely bushy one. This here is my Syngonium Confetti and I've had it for a while and it's been through a few ups and downs. It's done all sorts of things, but I finally got it in this big pot. It seems to be happy and it's just flourishing and I've decided I'm not going to put one up, this one up on a moss pole. I think it looks really, really pretty as a bushy plant. It's surviving really, really well. That's its nursery pot there. You've got a few roots coming through there and that's its cash pot. That is my Syngonium Confetti looking really, really lovely. And you can see the gorgeous variegation there. You've got the pinks and you've got the light greens there. It looks absolutely stunning. This is supposed to be a Syngonium milk confetti, non-tissue culture. That's what it was sold to me as. And look, to be honest, the, I, I, I struggle to find the difference between this milk confetti and the normal confetti that I just showed you. The milk confetti is supposed to have more pink and light, like white variegation or something. I could be wrong, I don't know. If, if you know what the difference is between the confetti and the milk confetti, please let me know in the comments below. So this is the confetti and this is the milk confetti. Is there any difference? I don't know. I can't tell. Maybe you can. They look exactly the same to me, but yeah, whatever. I've just left the label on and maybe as the plant develops, that difference is gonna come through. I don't know, or, you know, I'll just call them both confettis and leave it at that. What do you think? Next up is one of my all time favorite Syngoniums. And this is one of the plants that actually made me fall in love with Syngoniums. This is my Syngonium Fantasy or my Syngonium Albo. Oh my gosh, I absolutely adore this plant. When I got it, it was really, really small. And then we went through a period of it giving me all white leaves and that was really terrible. So I had to chop it and I've got a video above um, that shows you how I did all that. I chopped it, I did lots of propagating and I'll now show you what she looks like. That is her over there. Oh, I am adoring the look of this plant. Look at that fantastic variegation on there. You've got some that are predominantly white and you can see those white leaves just do not last very long. There's, you've got that going on over there, but this one is still looking beautiful. That's a half moon variegation. And then you've got this one over here. They're just so varied and they look so, so beautiful. That is my Syngonium Fantasy or my Syngonium Albo just looking the business. Living on a moss pole with its area roots just weaving through that moss and just really having a fun time with that moss. And as you can see, that one over there, that's some area roots there. I really do need to be thinking about extending this moss pole or what I'm gonna do, I don't know. I could either chop it or I could extend the moss pole. What do you think? Should I chop the plant and either just put it back in the pot and have an even bushier plant or should I extend it? Let me know in the comments below. I'm gonna show you a plant that has just not been working out for me. And uh, this is the Syngonium Wendelandii. I hope I'm saying that right. This is what this plant looked like when I got it and I've moved it from soil to leka and I've just been through the ringer with it. It just will not do what I need it to do. This is what it looks like now. Probably exactly the same size as it was when I last showed it to you. It's just, 
I don't know. It just won't, you know, go. I'm very tempted to just get rid of it and get a new one and start again, but I won't do that. I think it probably needs a bit more humidity than I've been able to provide. So maybe this is a good candidate for my recently acquired Rotent. I don't know. And I guess that just goes to show you, you know, you, you don't really have the solutions to every plant. Not every plant is going to be happy with the same kind of solution. So for this one, I still need to figure out what else she wants. That is my Syngodium Aurea. Oh, look at that. And it's really starting to get that characteristic trilobe. One, two, three of a Syngonium. Look at that one. Look at that one. It's just lovely. It's just that lime color is absolutely sublime. This plant is just, amazing i've got three of them in there when i got this plant it was really really quite tiny i think it was like a one or a two leafer and i've gone through multiple propagations to get the plant to look like this because again this is not a plant that's commonly found in australia so when i did get it i had to have many rounds of propagations to get it to look like this to even be worthy to put up on a moss pole but i think she's coming along really really nicely and come this time next year, I think she's going to be absolutely stunning. This is my Syngonium Three Kings. Oh, I love the variegation on this plant. It is absolutely stunning. This is one beautiful, beautiful plant. This plant and I have also gone through quite a few things. I've had to chop and propagate it a number of times to get it to look like this but i've also needed to chop and propagate so i could put some of the syngonium three king cuttings in my syngonium moss wall so you want to stick around and see what those look like but this plant is generally doing okay there's three of them in there and yeah you know i think it's it's okay it's doing fine that is that there is my syngonium three kings let me bring in a new one. This is my Syngonium Steamarchy. This is what she looked like when I got her. I put her in Lekka and I always have that period where when I get the plant and I put her, the plant in Lekka, it does need to go that through that transition period. So it takes a bit of time to get going in my care because I'm moving it from one media to another. But I'll show you what she looks like now. This is my Steamarchy. Look at those leaves aren't they just stunning they are huge and absolutely brilliant this is one of the older leaves hence it's got those markings on there and it's probably going to disappear not too long from now but oh my gosh look at her and how fabulously she's living on that moss pole she's actually living on one of my plastic sheet bag moss pole and this is a tree fern fiber sphagnum moss moss pole hybrid and oh my goodness look at her she is fantastic you can see the area root there just going down and working its way through that filling and oh i love her she is a statement. Can you imagine what this plant is going to look like as it matures? It's just going to be big leaves fanning out, just looking absolutely fantastic. I love the serrated edges of those leaves. Look at that. They're just, oh my gosh, syngoniums are just beautiful. It's just a beautiful plant. Another absolute banger is my Syngonium Batik. I love this plant. I've had this one for a while actually and we've gone through many different kinds of moss poles. I've had lots of different propagations. I've had period where the leaves are not as the veins are not as distinct as they could have been but you know I think she's doing really well. This is my gorgeous beauty. That is my Syngonium Batik. I can hardly even get her in the frame. She is absolutely stunning. Look at that leaf. Look at those new leaves over there. It's just the veins in those leaves. Look at that. Look at that. It's just, it's just absolutely stunning, absolutely magical. And she is also living on one of my plastic sheet bag moss poles. So she is very, very moist, stays moist all the time. And there's lots of new growth everywhere. So I'm really loving how this plant is going. This is one of my favorites. This is my Syngonium Mojito. Oh, look 
at that leaf. This is a mottled leaf and it's got that trilobed shape. Look at that one. They are all so different. They're all just like a lovely work of art. This plant I've had for a while. It looked like this when I got it and it's just gone through the months and changed a lot. I've had to propagate it a lot actually. So I've got some of those in my Syngonia moss wall. So you're gonna wanna see what those look like. And I've given some to friends, but this is what she now looks like. I'll pour her out completely. So that's the top there. And you can see, I do need to either extend this moss pole or do something because that right there is an airy root and this plant has come right to the top. But I'll show you what she looks like. And that's her. That's her, that is her, that's the bottom there. That is that plant. I wanna give it a makeover. Um, what do you think? Do you think I should give it a makeover? And with the kind of makeover that I'm thinking is, I'm probably wanting to have four plants on a one moss pole, a slightly thicker moss pole. So maybe one like that four plants growing up there so that it's really, really good. So that would mean I'd have to dismantle this moss pole, get a few choice cuttings from there, and then maybe just give away the bottom parts or something and start over again um, because this is not really what the image I had in my mind. I would like it to be a lot bushier than this. Do you think that's a video you'd love to see me create? I'm personally, I'd love to just do it quickly and just be done with it. But do you think that's something you might want to see? If that's something you want to see me recreate on video, please let me know in the comments below. And if enough people say yes, I'll make a video of how I transform my Syngonia mojito from living in a small, thin moss pole to a fabulous lush beauty of four plants or five plants even living on this fantastic, almost semi moss wall. Let me know what you think. The next new one is my Syngonium Frosted Heart. This has got a very different shape to what is normally known for the Syngonium. So that is a Frosted Heart. And it's got these leaves with a little gray undertone to that green. They look absolutely fantastic. I've got two plants living on this plastic sheet backed tree fern fiber moss pole and it's doing really really well i've got some new growth that has come through and you can see this new leaf there coming through so that's going really really well and can you imagine when this plant reaches the top there what those leaves will be doing it's just going to look absolutely glorious this one is my syngonium frosted heart because it looks like a frozen heart it looks brilliant i love it this is my Syngonium moss wall. She is just looking absolutely fantastic. You can see the, that's a Syngonium batik on there. That is a Syngonium panda living on there. You've got your three kings on there and I've got a mojito down there. That's my mojito living there. It's just looking absolutely stunning. I love how this wall is really filling out and it's just, oh my gosh, it's going to be absolutely beautiful. So when I created this moss wall, um, check out the link in the video above, um, things did not go very well on the day that I created it. My moss wall was falling apart. Things didn't go as I wanted them to go. I eventually got it together. So I have rehabilitated my moss wall and I have made it slightly thicker. And I have also incorporated tree fern fiber in this wall. So it's a lot thicker than it used to be. And it's got some tree fern fiber in there, meaning it's very, very easy for me to keep moist, a lot easier than it was when it was just sphagnum moss only. That's what it looks like at the back. It's got a plastic sheet at the back that keeps the moisture very, very nicely in there. And of course, it's living in Lekka and it's just really, really doing well. This plant is living in one of my special Lechuza pots. So it's living in a Balconera 50 and it's very easy for me to pick up the planter, examine the roots, wash out the reservoir if I need to without causing any damage. Syngoniums are an absolutely fantastic choice for this because they stalk, they climb up and the leaves are just fabulous. And there's so many different varieties that this wall is just going to be such a 
fabulous masterpiece as time goes on. It's really easy to water. I just water it from the top and that sphagnum moss stays moist and I put nutrient solution in my reservoir and that's how my plant actually accesses water and nutrition and is able to stay healthy like this. I know you love plant collections. Check out this next video where I showcase some of my splashy variegated Hoyas. I'll see you there.